everybody. Welcome back to Five for Family. So glad that you're joining us again this week. So this week our reader is someone who absolutely loves our kids. He is the director of the Youth and Young Adult Ministries at EBC. So Ryan, on to our story. This story is called Daniel and the Scary Sleepover. Things were not looking good for God's people. They had been captured and taken far from home. And now they were slaves of the king of Babylon, but God had not left him, have not left his people. He was with them and he was looking after them. He was with them and he was looking after them. Daniel loved God and obeyed him. Now God made Daniel able to understand lots of difficult things. So it wasn't long before the king of Babylon noticed him. King Darius liked how clever Daniel was. So he made Daniel his most important helper uh, um, and put him in charge of lots of other helpers. But the other helpers didn't like, didn't like this. They wanted the king to like them the best. They wanted to get rid of Daniel, so they spied on Daniel. They tried to find things wrong with Daniel, the things they could tell the king, things they could, they could, um, but there, there weren't any, there weren't, there wasn't a single thing that they could find wrong with Daniel, none at all. They couldn't find anything, nothing at all, except there was just one thing, just one thing. Every day, three times a day, Daniel would go to his room, close the door, and he prayed. They smiled to themselves. Let's get the king to make a law. No one is allowed to pray to anyone except to the king. Daniel won't obey this law and he will be punished. They were pleased with themselves for being so clever and hurried off to tell the king. The king liked their idea. He didn't know they were tricking him. So he made it into law. Everyone must pray only to me. It won't if you don't, the lions will have you for dinner. Daniel heard this. He knew it was wrong to pray to anyone except God. He had to do what God said, whatever it cost him, even if it meant he would die. So Daniel went to his room, closed the door, and he prayed. That's just what the bad men knew Daniel would do. They skipped straight to tell the king, oh, your most glittering highness, your law says, uh, does it not that everyone must pray to you alone, sire? Yes, said the king. Oh, magisterial brightness, the correct us if we're wrong, but it would seem that Daniel is praying to God, not to you. The king was sad. He had been tricked. He didn't want to hurt Daniel, but he couldn't change his law. And so he let the soldiers throw Daniel into the pit with lions. May your God, may your God, who you love so much, rescue you, the king said. The king went back to his palace, but he didn't sleep that night. Not a single wink. He tossed and he turned until finally at the first glimmer of light and at the first glimmer of dawn, he leapt out of his bed and ran straight to the lion's den. Daniel, he cried. Daniel, he cried. Has your God rescued you? Yes, Daniel shouted. God sent an angel who closed the lion's mouth and there resting his head on Daniel's lap was the biggest lion purring like a little kitten. The king brought Daniel out of the den. Look, he said, Daniel doesn't even have a scratch on him. The king made a new law. Daniel's God is the true God, the God who rescues. Pray to him instead. God would keep on rescuing his people and time was coming when God would send another brave hero like Daniel who would love God and do what God said, whatever it cost him even if it meant he would die. And together, they would pull off the greatest rescue the world has ever known. Thank you so much, Ryan, for sharing our story today. So now we are on to our question and answer portion. So don't forget to press pause. So your first question is, who was today's story about? Press pause. What did Daniel do three times a day? Press pause. Do you make time to pray every day? Press pause. What kind of reminders can you make for yourself to help you to remember to pray every day? Press pause. 
Daniel knew he would be thrown into the lion's den if he prayed, but he knew that praying to God was the right thing to do. Have you ever done the right thing even though it was hard or you knew that there would be a consequence? Press pause. God rescued Daniel from the lion's den and he rescued him from the people that were plotting against him. Parents, I want you to share with your kids a time where God rescued or protected you from any situation in your life. All right, now we are to our activities. So as usual, you can build it with Legos or blocks. And I think those would be some pretty epic things to see. And if you do it, please send me a picture. This would also be an amazing one to act out. You could have someone be the lion, someone be the angel, someone be Daniel. Good times. You can also watch the Veggie Tales. So much fun. That is one of the best wraps in Veggie Tales. Oh no, what we gonna do? The king likes Daniel more than me and you. It's fantastic. I think I'm gonna watch it when I finish. Also, we have a whole bunch of worksheets and activities that you can complete together. A fun one is the two paper plates and the pictures that you combine to make a lion. And you can write the verse on there. And remember that God protects us even in hard situations. We don't need to be afraid because he's always with us. So parents, please spend some time just talking with your kids and helping them to learn and know that God is there for us no matter what we go through and that obeying him is always the right choice. I love you guys. I miss you and I hope you have a wonderful week. We'll see you next week for another five for family.